Hello and welcome to this video on what's new in IBM Integration Bus version 10 from Transformer Tech Inc. I'm Adam Zika, so let's go ahead and get started. For this presentation, we're going to go over a few key new features added to the Integration Bus in version 10. We're focused on four main aspects. The movement to the cloud, simplicity in bringing IIB to your business, enhanced external connectivity options, and changes to the core graphical mapping, as well as a few more additions to this new release. First are some new features centered around the cloud. With version 10 of IBM Integration Bus, IBM is continuing to look towards the cloud as the new frontier for integration. This new release brings a few key features to help facilitate this goal. One of the key new features is callable flows. Added with FixPack 4, callable flows allow for extending and splitting tasks between local IIB and cloud IIB installations. As you can see in the image, the capabilities of the on-premise IIB are extended by the IIB in the cloud. This can also work in reverse if you have a database on local premises and you want to open it up to web users, you don't have to poke holes in your system, you have one callable flow that can handle it all. You can also use these flows to split load between multiple integration servers and nodes that are on the same local system. Another example of a possible use for callable flows is to expose a REST API. Support for REST APIs was added in this new release and can now be created from Swagger 2.0 documents. IIB will auto-create message flows based on the Swagger document, allowing for a quick start to exposing a REST API. This gives you the flexibility to use all of the IIB resources you already know inside of an API, and with FixPack 4, you can now roll your own API from scratch. Once you have your API created, whether from a Swagger document or from scratch, you can export it to IBM API Management Server directly from IIB for monitoring and to secure access. Also added in version 10 of IIB is a Salesforce node to interact with Salesforce in the cloud. This allows a user to create, retrieve, update, and delete objects in Salesforce. Next we have some changes that make this version of IIB easier than ever to begin integrating systems right out of the box. IIB is easier to install on both Windows and Linux with a single executable for both the runtime and the toolkit, removing the need for the installation manager. A local integration server and integration node is also created on first run of the toolkit without running the default configuration wizard. To help with a simpler install process and to facilitate IIB in the cloud, Web3MQ is no longer a prerequisite for IBM Integration Bus. Applications can be developed and deployed independently, as well as IIB can be administered completely independent from MQ or Integration Explorer using the web user interface. The web UI has been enhanced with administration tasks to allow for managing integration servers, deploying resources, starting and stopping deployed resources, and managing configurable services. You can also collect and view resource statistics for the integration server or node right inside the UI. Version 10 brings increased flexibility with or without WebServer MQ, allowing IIB to directly put and get messages from a local or remote queue manager. To help support an MQ-less IIB, support for MQ telemetry transport has been added. With MQTT nodes, you can still use publication subscription functionality even without MQ in the environment. This new release also brings shared libraries to help replace static libraries, and now any application that needs the library can access the same shared one without deploying each library to each application, and changes to a single shared library can be replicated across all applications. Another way version 10 brings increased simplicity is by extending the debugger with the flow exerciser, allowing for you to send test messages to your message flow and track its progress through processing. You can mouse over recorded messages to see what they look like as they pass through the message flow. Next, we will look how this new release has some new enhancements to work with external endpoints and systems. Version 10 of IIB brings a new framework for connecting to external systems and endpoints using a connector framework and user-defined nodes. This is extremely useful to be able to connect to any external system not directly supported with built-in nodes, whether it's proprietary protocols or home-world solutions. This framework was extended to create IIB industry packs, which are add-ons for IIB that include packs of nodes centered around healthcare, manufacturing, and retail, with more packs to come. Also added is a process to create a JavaScript API from existing integration service to be used in any JavaScript environment, whether it's for mobile or Node.js web programming. Version 10 brings support for the embedded global cache to use WebSphere Extreme Scale Enterprise data grids, allowing for the cache to be an extreme data format instead of a standard Java serialized object. This vastly increases the performance of the cache and speed at which you can access cache data. More support for recording and replaying data from Microsoft SQL Database has been added. This would allow for data capture and to replay data stored inside of a SQL database for later use in testing. In the past, only DB2 databases were supported. This new release also has an enhanced SOAP and HTTP node security that now uses transport level security protocols. 
Next, we'll look at some changes to the graphical mapping node, which is always being improved, and this new version brings a big one by adding support for user-defined elements not in the XML schema or defined in a DFDL. This includes data that is in the local environment, message body, environment, and transport headers. Previously, an element had to be accounted for in the mesh set or scheme of the message, causing these elements to not be available. Another example of this is added support for mapping and creating JSON messages, even though they are typically schemaless, which extends the support added for user-defined elements in mapping nodes. So whether you're using JSON as an output for an API or using it to model an API, it's now supported. Another improvement for the mapping node is added support for Oracle stored procedures in database routines. In the past, you could only add DB2 stored procedures. Finally, we're going to go over a few more enhancements that was added to this new version. They've added a temp mode to trace nodes, allowing for temporary trace outputs without bogging down a system. So whether it's for 10 messages or 10 errors, you can leave your trace nodes inside your message flow and you won't be inundated with trace messages. In a move to include many proprietary systems in different industries, IIB version 10 has open source integration with GitHub for industry-driven patterns and schemas, allowing for anyone in any industry to create and share an IIB pattern. Also, this new version brings a continuation of a move to replace WebSphere ESB. IIB adds more automatic conversions for submaps and past the transient context, shared context, and correlation context conversions with more conversions to come. Thank you for watching this video on what's new in IBM Integration Bus version 10. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. You can find us online at transformatech.com. If you want to send us an email about a question or you're looking to bring IIB to your business, you can email us at info at transformatech.com. Thank you.